I'm sure you've seen babies with protruding or bulging belly buttons. Yes, and then you've been wondering what it is. Maybe a lot of people are giving you advice um, from your mother, mother-in-law, aunties, elderly neighbors. Yes, it's fine. I'm here to tell you that <laughs> this bulging belly button or protruding belly button it's common in about 10% of babies when they are born and we call it umbilical hernia. If you want to find out more, please stick around. This is Time with Dr. Adams. Time with Dr. Adams. Hi there. Welcome to another episode of Time with Dr. Adams. So should I say welcome Fifi and PH. Today I want us to talk about umbilical hernia in babies or in children. Uh, this is going to be my help, giraffe. That's the only teddy bear we have in the house. It belongs to Boris baby. I'm just going to use it uh, to explain what Ambalaka Henya is. So this morning, I, I have this WhatsApp group where um, I teach women some things. Women and babies, zero to two years. Uh, yes, we, we learn about a lot of things. And one of them sends me a message today. And it's, it's, a, it's a question I get a lot that my five months old baby or my, my child under one year has a protruding belly button or has a swollen belly button. I'm here to tell you that it's not something we've not seen before. It's a usual occurrence. It happens in about 10% of the babies. Okay, so the belly button, as you see here, when you look on your abdomen, everyone has an imaginary line. I'm trying to draw it, just imagine it. That is why when you are pregnant, you see a black line here. Before pregnancy, it's called linear alpha. You cannot see it when you look down. But during pregnancy, the hormones make that line black and we call it linear nigra. It becomes black. Yes. So when it gets to the belly button, everyone, that, now that's a muzzle. Uh, that line connects the muscles left and right together. So during pregnancy, there is a hole that is created on the baby. This giraffe is our model. There's a hole that is uh, anatomically created here, which is fine, it comes with nature. And through this hole, the hole is connected to the placenta and that's what baby gets its nutrients uh, from or it's getting the nutrients from the placenta through a tube into that umbilical ring on the baby. So after baby is born, when you cut the ephuma or when you cut the umbilical cord, it becomes something short and usually you want it to die or to fall out in a week, which is normal. After this thing dies out, the cord dies out and it falls out. The stump that we see, hi. <laughs> You all know what was baby. <laughs> the stump that we see inside there is a hole. Please, you do not have to do anything to close that hole. It will naturally close on its own. Please, I repeat, when you are pregnant, uh, you, the mother and the baby, you are connected by, uh, by a tube. From the mother, the mother has a placenta and then there's a tube connected from the placenta to the belly button or the belly ring of the baby. After birth, we cut that umbilical cord and it's left with a small stump like this. This stump will fall off after a week. And when it closes, the wound heals. There is a small ring in there which closes by itself. You don't have to go and pour hot water on baby to close it. It's a muzzle. Please, it will close by itself. I'm repeating, it's a muzzle. It will close by itself. If you still haven't subscribed, please do not forget to subscribe as we continue. Okay? So it's a muzzle and it will close by itself. However, the 10% of babies I'm talking about, this muzzle does not close. And you see intestines bulging out through this hole. Okay? Usually, it's not supposed to cause any pain in the baby. You actually see it when baby is straining mm. yes darling you actually see it when baby is straining is crying anything that will put pressure on the abdomen I me mean, when i was pregnant i ha i have one when i was pregnant uh you, you could see it through my dress that i have a small uh bulge at the navel so 
someone has cooked, I'm supposed to eat. Then Kim is like, good job. Not one girl. Bye. <laughs> oh, you are back. Okay. So that small bulge, it's supposed to close. And it's not supposed to be painful in baby. We only see it when baby is training, baby is crying, baby is coughing, or even trying to poop. But it's supposed to disappear when baby is lying calmly, especially when baby is sleeping. All right? So if these are the signs you are seeing, and you want baby to be properly diagnosed, please you send baby to the hospital for uh, your doctors or a health worker to see it and properly diagnose baby. Ah, thank you. What is it? Rice. 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 Good job. Okay. So that <laughs> what baby is going to worry us through. Does that like <laughs> grandma has to have a soul? Yes. She's a little help. She's cooking rice up for you. So we are going to eat rice as we talk. All right. So um, that's it. Their, di their diagnosis is to take baby to the hospital for us to feel it. Like I said, if baby is not straining and baby is lying down, when baby lies down and you put your hand in the belly button, the middle of the belly button, you feel the hole. It's not something you're supposed to do. That is what something we doctors are supposed to do. We fill the hole, and that is something that will help us with our diagnosis. Now, we need to go and take a, an ultrasound, which is usually not all the time needed. But then, for you to be confident that your child has been diagnosed well, the doctor can make you take a, an ultrasound. They will see the hole, and that is an umbilical hernia. So, now how do we treat umbilical hernia? Please, mothers. Note this, it's very important to listen to what I'm going to tell you here. Ambalaika hernias in children usually closes by themselves. You don't have to put a coin, and it's, you know, they'll say, say, put a coin there and tie the child, or put something around there and tie it with a cloth around the child. Please, we used to do that in the olden days. This is 2022. Don't do that to your child, it will close by itself when your child is four to five years. If your child is around five years and it hasn't closed, please come to the hospital and let's talk. Not this. I'm Balaika Hania. Yes, darling. I should eat. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I'm Balaika are only treated by surgery. Nothing else apart from it closing the hole, closing on its own by itself. You can only treat Ambalaika hernia through surgery and usually we do it around five years when it hasn't closed in a child apart from waiting for it to close around five years if your child is in severe pain you've seen that the intestines has gone through the hole and it's protruding out there and anytime you touch it even if child is sleeping remember i said when child is sleeping it's supposed to disappear back into the abdomen now if your child is relaxed it's not crying it's not screaming it's not pooping it's not coughing and it's lying calmly yes still the protrusion can be seen and when you touch it it's painful then it's time to see your doctor even though your child is not five years please i'm telling you when to see the doctor when your child is five years and the, protr uh, the protrusion is still there it goes in and out you, you are still you are supposed to see the doctor two when the protrusion comes even when child is at uh, a relaxed phase is relaxing and it's very firm or anytime you touch it it's painful then you are supposed to see the doctor or when the protrusion is looking very red or has a scarlet something blackish and it's it's it's, it's all reddish and it's painful please see the doctor okay um usually when the protrusion comes and baby is sleeping you are supposed to be able to push the protrusion back in there that is what we call reducible umbilical like hernia but when baby is at rest is sleeping is relaxed is not coughing is not straining and yet still you cannot push the protrusion back to, into the abdomen we call it irreducible Ambalical hernia, and that can cause a complication uh, that is named as incarcerated ambalical hernia. You do not want that. So, mothers that have children without belly button, anytime the child is calm, is sleeping, is not putting pressure on the abdomen, is not straining, try to push it back just to make sure that 
it's still reducible. It, it, it's not reducible, even though it's not painful. And the child is sleeping, but you are not able to push it back. Please yeah. take the child to see a dolphin. All right. So do not get scared if your baby has that around five months, around six months. That's when you usually see the first signs. It's okay. If you are not, you are not convinced after this video, still take your child to the hospital to be properly diagnosed. That's the proper way to do things. As a doctor, I've examined and I'm still it's an umbrella, it's an umbrella like hanging here. Now you can come home and relax. Just look out for the signs that we're looking out for when you are supposed to take the child to the hospital. Thank you for staying around, sticking around and listening to this episode. If there are any questions, let me know in the comment section below. If there's anything you want to tell me or you want me to cover, please let me know in the comment section below. Please like, comment and do not forget to subscribe. Bye. Time with Dr.